Hello. Hi there. And welcome to Draw With Me. Uh, hopefully, hopefully everything is working now, yes? Uh, I think so. There's an auspicious opening. Yeah, a little, it's always little nice mercury retrograde yes. for your intro. <laughs> Here's JJ. Hello, JJ. Hi. I'm Danny Gregory, by the way. And um, this is Draw With Me. Every Thursday, we get together at 9 a.m. Pacific. I know some people are here early. And we're saying, what happened? What's the time? Maybe time difference has thrown you, but we're always here Pacific time, 9 a.m. Pacific. So if you just check Google, you'll find that out. So how are things going, JJ, in the community, as far as you can tell? I mean, a lot of people dealing with snow. Snow and burry, burry. burry Late burry, uh, yes. April and welcome cold temps. And uh, yeah, here in Arizona, we're going up to, I think, about 80 degrees today. Yeah, Sorry. our Mexican primroses are popping out. Our roses are going berserk. It is very nice. Yes. So sorry for your snow, but you know, it probably means you're about to have a breakthrough. We, we say that in art, right? When you feel like you are having a real stumbling block, when you have a, you know, a roadblock, it means you're about to have a breakthrough. Fair so enough. just think of it that way. Yes. So I see we have... Uh, we have some. We have Phobos from Slovenia is here, and we have Ramya from Dubai. Awesome! I saw yes. uh, someone from the Philippines. We have. Uh, I saw David a couple of people in, from Australia. There's in the middle of the night. David in, in Bologna. Very nice. Uh, Swaggy Snow is here from the Netherlands. I think Swaggy showed up early. So. So Europe changed its clock, out. right? Like, is that what happened? Europe has. I don't know. I believe so. I think someone else mentioned that uh, European time changes summer time. If, so. you put, if you put us on your calendar, um, or if you subscribe, best thing to do is to subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe and hit the bell, then Google will let you know, and you don't have to worry about it. But if you put it on your calendar, just set it for 9 a.m. Pacific. So, yes, as Diane says, uh, she says, hello, everyone. We already know it's going to be good, so give Danny and JJ a thumbs up, I lest mean, you forget later. Diane, so you nice. are just looking after us. I hope Thank we can, you. I hope we can live up to you. We are going to. We are going to because we're, we're like pretty excited about, we're just excited this week generally. We have fun things going on. It's and, true. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Yes. So let me just tell you quickly about one of the things that we're excited about, which is the launch of, this is like the first all-in art class that I've taught since since iPad, really, right? iPad or maybe dip pen, but it's been literally years. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I've been doing, but I, it's been literally years since I taught an art course. Well, like, we've caught about 50 workshops. That, that yeah, was a different done, format. Done a lot of workshops. We've also, done a lot of it, yeah, so these are, the, these are the back to the old school Courses. Yeah. yeah, so now we are, you know, and it's the 10th anniversary of Sketchbook Soul. So I've been thinking a lot about that, about how to kind of create this sort of energy around a course again, because things are very different than they were in 2014. Um, we're all older, wiser, and have stronger and different immune systems. So, um, so yeah, so I bore all those things in mind in coming up with this class called Your Illustrated Life. And I want to just... Uh, have you check out this is the url school.tiny.us slash memoir so we are having an early bird special on this i'm going to talk about the course in a second but i just want to let you know here we're having this early bird special and let me i'll explain what that is jj i want you to help me to ex explain this so so your illustrated life is a class that's about creating an illustrated memoir in your sketchbook filling your sketchbook with memories and basically what we're going to do is we're going to start a dedicated sketchbook just for this project and we're going to go and explore whatever part of your life you want to dig into it could be your childhood it could be your whole life it could be some particular phase of your life and we're going to do um all i'm going to come up with lots of prompts and exercises and things like that that will help you to well if you're going to be typing jj i'm just going to go back to this um we're going to be talking about really the events of our lives, but also the emotions, the lessons learned, um, the connections that we're making. And so it's in part sort of uh, a really a psychological thing, an historical thing. It's going to be writing. It's going to be drawing. 
Um, and it's also going to be, um, you know, it's, it's a balance between written and drawn. So it's going to use all of our skills uh, to tell these stories of our lives and to end up with a sketchbook that I think will be an incredible uh, keepsake, really. It'll be this beautiful thing that you've made that you could uh, have as, as a special private thing. It could be something that you share with your family and friends. It could be something that you leave to your grandchildren. Uh, it's up to you. There's all kinds of things. But I think it's going to be a way of taking all these skills that we've worked on for 10 years at Sketchbook School, that we've worked on here with, on Draw With Me, and to say, how can we put all these things to work to tell our stories? Well, because everyone has a story. I mean, that's what we've really learned in Sketchbook School. I think that's my biggest takeaway is... People need to express themselves. Everybody has an interesting life. Everyone's right. life is interesting. And, you know, someone, there was a, really, a bit of a snarky comment in the YouTube channel yesterday where someone said, why do you need to know everyone's story? Why does the world need to know everyone's stories? It's because when you see all of humanity is connected, then we have such a more beautiful existence on earth the, yeah. you know you don't see people as other you see somebody in another country had a similar experience to you they may be a totally you know it may be somebody that you were set up to fear or you didn't trust in some way and now you're connected so what could be better than sharing our stories and yeah i agree i think that that's to me the most important power that art has art of all forms is it's about showing that, you know, even though we're all living inside of our own bodies, our own heads, we're also, we have we're so one. much in common. We're that all we have, one. We are, and we can learn from each other's experiences. So, again, you don't have to share your stories. You can just make this for you. And it can, it can by telling your own story to you, you can start to realize, oh, there are themes, there are connections. You could go back in the past and say, I suddenly realized that this event was actually really important to me and really changed a lot of things about me. Maybe I want to re-examine it. So it's really an opportunity to, to dive deep. So um, the course, we're still in the process of making this course. Every day we're working on it. <laughs> oh, boy. It's, it's a lot because it's very, it's very powerful stuff. And we, I want to make sure that we get it right. And so um, the course itself is going to appear on May um, 24th. So it's not... Even though you can sign up today, you won't actually get the course materials until May 24th. Yeah, because you have to make them for, yeah. between now and then. That's not the only reason. <laughs> but we work on it every day. We work on it every day, and it gets better and better every day because we're putting a lot of thought into it, and um, that's right. really, yeah. It's so, true. So we're working on it every day, and the idea behind the early bird special is that we're going to give you a discount, of course, because you're saying, you know what, I want to try, I want to sign up early so I can get in on this thing and I want to support it. Um, and then you will get access on May 24th. But what we're also doing is the people who sign up for the early bird special will get to participate in what we're calling studio time. Studio time is when we get together on Zoom at certain times and we're going to we're gonna arrange these times so they're at different times of day. So if you're in a different time zone, you can still participate. And it's a place where you can just work on your thing. It's not a class it's not a workshop it's just an opportunity to be there to make an appointment with yourself to say you know what at this point i want to work on a bit of this now my thought about this whole thing is it's going to take you a fair amount of time to make this and you know you might want to work on it over weeks months years i even it's going to um, give you a good good kickstart yeah but, but yeah then but, it, it's it might be like a prereq to a story a deeper story that you want to tell i mean I think we have limited time here on Draw With Me, so maybe we should uh, yeah, let me, leave it let me the rest just, to imagination. Let me just, if you don't mind, let me just finish what I was going to say. Okay. So, yeah, so so what I wanted to do is to have a kind of a universal experience that everybody who signs up for this can be taking it more or less at the same time. But it's also going to be available in the future as well, and uh, you can just sign up for it, work on it at your own pace, at your own time. I'm going to be releasing more information about it, more uh, sort of behind-the-scenes things as we as we continue to develop it. But if you'd like to sign up now and get, get some of these perks, then please do. You can go and you can check it out here. All right, we'll be talking about this again. I'm not going to 
beat the drum too much, but I think it's just something really cool that I'm really looking forward to us working on together. Yeah, so, we're proud of it. Yeah. And we haven't even made it yet. <laughs> no, we have, we've, we've made, made a lot, a lot of, of it, it, but yeah, a it's, it, it's yeah. getting, you know, it's like anything. Once you s s get deep in it, you refine it. There you go. All right. Good. All anyway. right. Enough of that. that. So yep. what I wanted to do today is I wanted to sort of experiment with uh, an idea that I really, that is one of the f first exercises that we're going to do in the course. And I thought we could all do it together today. And the idea is that we're going to do a portrait of ourselves at a particular point in time. So it could be now, it could be when you were a baby, it could be at any point in between. But think of a time that was maybe a time of significance, or maybe it's a time where you would like to kind of jog your memory and think more deeply about it. And you might have pictures. You might have pictures. I'm going to show you some pictures of myself at the stage that I want to draw. But it's not, the idea is not like, let's copy a photo. Although you could do it that way. The idea really is more, look at those pictures just to take yourself back. But even if they don't, think about the pictures in your mind, the, in your memory. What do you remember about yourself at a particular time? Maybe it's when you were going to high school for the first time. Maybe it's when you went, when you got married. Whatever it is, think about that time in your mind. Because what I want to do is I want to draw a portrait of our, our whole body, so head to toe. And then I want to um, identify, do little call outs where you write about things about yourself. You know, like what kind of shoes would you have worn in those days? Or maybe you're holding an object, maybe you're holding an object in each hand. What are those objects and what's significance about them? What clothes are you wearing? What's your hairstyle like? Um, what jewelry do you have? And we're going to add all those things into the picture. It's almost like you're a, like a dress-up doll um, where you accessorize yourself with all these things that have significance. And then, you know, if there's room on the, on the page or if you're doing it in a spread, maybe you want to write a bit about this. Like maybe the process of doing this drawing is going to un open up some stuff in your brain and you can say, you know, I remember that time. It was a profound time for me or that was a time where I struggled or maybe that's a time that I wish I could go back and talk to me at that time and say, hey, you know, this is, let me give you some perspective on where you're at. Or maybe you're having a struggle right now, and this is how things are going to change. Or maybe it's the happiest time of your life, and you want to celebrate that. So, so yeah, so this is the idea is, if you have some pictures that you want to pull out, great. If you don't, then let's, um, let's use your imagination as reference. So let me just uh, get some pictures here. Let me just get this in focus, too. All right, good. So uh, here's my sketchbook. And here is, here's a picture of me at the age that I wanted to explore. So at this point in my life, I was nine years old. And uh, it, was, it was a really an interesting point of transition for me. I had, uh, I had long hair, it was the 60s. You had hair. I had hair, <laughs> I had hair. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, I have a, f a few photographs of me from that time. This is another one from that period. Um, and I went, I, we lived in Australia at the time. And I went to a thing called the Australian, the um, Australian, what was it called? Canberra Grammar School. I lived in Canberra, which is the capital of Australia. And I wore a uniform uh, every day to school. We had a summer uniform and a winter uniform. And this is the summer uniform. It was, it was summer most a lot of the time there. Uh, it was basically khaki pants, shorts, and a um, shirt, socks, a tie. In fact, this tie. Can you, uh, I was going to say, you're wearing the actual tie, aren't this you? This is the actual tie. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. but it's it, kind of like a little mini it's tie. It's a little bit short. <clears throat> it's a little bit short because I, I think I first got this sh sh when I was six. So, um, yeah, so I've had this for almost uh, more than a half a century. Um, but yes, so, whoops, so here is, you know, and there are other things about this, like uh, here's another picture of me wearing, this is, this is with my mom, you know, snazzy my mom looks in those days. Um, but yeah, so I'm wearing these little, this cap that we had to wear with a little crest sewn into it. And um, so, <laughs> it's so cute. So I think I'm going to just, I'm going to focus on that version of me. And uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so I had, um, I had, I had this, my mother cut my hair, so that's always a bit tragic. But <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, I'm not again, I'm, I'm going to draw this from memory. I'm putting all those pictures aside. I just wanted to show you what I'm seeing in my head so that when uh, I start drawing it, you'll have some sense of where that's coming from. But uh, okay, does this all make sense? Are there any questions about this? Uh, no, everybody's, everybody's good. I think everyone's waiting to see what you do. But you're going to do one drawing today, right? You're. I'm going to do one drawing. Yeah, I'm going to do one drawing, and I'm going to spend some time on it. You know, um, even though it's going to be sort of a, I'm going to do a drawing that's almost like a kid's drawing or like a, a drawing from a kid's kid's illustration or something. You know, so I'm not. big head on myself, a thin neck, and uh, I think of what I'll be holding, I'm not sure yet. I think I'll be holding a book in this hand. So... To figure out what book that is, because that's part of part of what I want to think about is what are the all the accessories of my, of that, I, that might help to tell my story. Because that's really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to isolate this time and you know point out what was specific about it. I think having an untucked shirt is probably part of my look back then. And uh, shorts. So so yeah. So we wore shorts year-round, even in the winter. In the winter, we wore woolen shorts, but they were still shorts. We got knee socks, I bet. We got knee socks, but also... In fact, I'm going to draw those knee socks. I'm just going to re reference back the pictures. I remember them. They had they had like a little kind of st one stripe on them. Um, and I think probably brown shoes. Seems like that's probably what it was about. Brown shoes... I don't remember shoes though. Do you remember shoes from that age? Not really. Uh, I mean, here in Arizona, we had sandals. Yeah, I wore sandals when, when I lived in Pakistan. Sandals were definitely the thing. Sandals, and you know, I think it was a time when you kind of owned like two pairs of shoes, right? I mean, I owned like well, your feet would grow, right? Yeah. I mean, so I had like to state the obvious. You get a pair of shoes, and then you'd grow out of them. You get a new pair. Yeah, so I had school shoes, and then I had. Uh, you know, um, we called them, I think, plimsolls. So you didn't have sneakers. Sneakers. But we, they were called plimsolls. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, but you didn't really play any sports, did you? Yeah. I mean, I was actually an extremely accomplished athlete. You were not. I was not. No, but I was. Uh, but yeah, you had to do. You had to do stuff at school. You had to do um, sports, right? So. P.E. P.E. Right. Dreaded P.E. God. I Running laps, or um, you know, playing. Here's my tie. Um, as you can see, it has stripes, so it has stripes, kind of double stripes. Let me go this way on that side. So yeah, but I, I knew how to tie a tie when I was six. Good skill to have. Surprised? I bet they now give them clip-ons. They had clip-ons back then, but no, that was not acceptable. But yeah, now there's probably like a choking hazard or something, right? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I think now about PE and some of the things they made us do in PE, I hope they don't do those things now. Yeah. Yeah, we're sort of out of touch with this age of child because we don't have any grandchildren and we don't have any friends who really have kids this age. We have a friend who actually is a gym teacher. That's true. He, I had a really interesting conversation with him about what he did during the pandemic with how he taught kids to do gym stuff on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so then um, I think I'm going to start dealing with my eyes. 
face. Are your eyes going to be giant? I think they'll be big-ish. I had long eyelashes. You had quite the eyebrow. I had eyebrows. Yeah. That was before I started waxing my eyebrows. <laughs> Yeah, but I had I had these eyelashes. I had pretty big eyes, I guess, for a youth. Um, and then I had a nose even back then. I think my, at least in these pictures, a lot of the time I look kind of glum. You know, I don't know that I was glum. I probably wasn't. But I think I just didn't like have my having my picture taken. So that might have been part of it. I mean, I think you were a bit glum. I think you had a challenging home life in this time. I did. I had a I mean, let's be honest. This was shortly before you were sent away to live with your grandparents. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to, to, to kind of focus on this age of, you know, eight or nine. Because um, it was the time when I had been living with my mother and my sister in Australia, in Canberra, for a couple of years then. So I was sort of acclimated to that time. And um, But with a stepfather who didn't really like you. It was my second stepfather, actually. So I had, I had two stepfathers. And... Um, yeah, so... They decided that I should go and live in Pakistan with my grandparents. So that's kind of what was going on around this time of my life. <laughs> and I had hair, so I'm going to work on the hair now. So what I'm trying to do is, the reason that I'm doing it in this style is because I'm less interested in having a perfect likeness of myself at this age. You know, that might have some utility perhaps, but really what I want to do is I want to kind of have some feelings about this experience, about this time, you know, and to capture perhaps kind of more of a kid's point of view, you know, like how does a kid see the world? And, um, you know, I think that that's part of this process is really to, to see how you can trigger memories that maybe you've forgotten about. Maybe you've forgotten about them on purpose, you know. So, so the, the less that you focus on, oh, does this really, is this really a good likeness and the more you can say am i getting myself into a kind of a flow state that is taking me back you know that's that is that feels feels more than looks you know what i'm saying so i want to i want to have something that like you know, I look at myself now at that age, when I think about myself at that age, you know, I feel a certain protectiveness. Um, of myself at that point, you know, like I think. Poor, here Dan I am. poor I, Danny. I don't know that I think poor Danny exactly, because I mean, I wasn't like a, I wasn't. No, I don't think poor Danny. I just think. If I, I mean, my, my parents, my mother was pretty young at that point. She was, she was just 30, you know. She was Jack's age. I think about that, you know. It's like you're, you're, you're not even 30 and you're already on your third husband and your second child. It's a lot. And my mother at that time was working on her Ph.D., 
And so that was sort of part of the idea that I would go and live with my grandparents was because she was busy with all the requirements of that stuff. You know, and I, again, I can sort of understand that. So, so I think I mean, you had a happy time with your grandparents. I mean, as much as you missed. I did. But, you know, your grandparents were fantastic carriers. I mean, my grandparents were, yeah, I mean, I'd known, obviously known them my whole life, but they, you know, they lived thousands of miles away. And I flew on a plane by myself. I just discovered this word today, in fact. I just happened upon it by randomness. This term, parachute children. Have you ever heard that that term? No. Yeah, it's apparently, it's a term that's usually used, I think they originally applied it to kids from Taiwan. But it's kids who whose families sent them away, usually for education, you know, so... We just yeah. had somebody from Taiwan in the chat. Well, Taiwan having an earthquake. I yeah. have to say the images that we saw were terrifying. So, yeah. So it's so yeah. These, my, I mean, my mother was sort of. Uh, she went to boarding school. She went to boarding school. Yeah, when starting when she was like seven or eight. I think that's part of why she thought it was okay to send me as far away as she did, because she was like, well, oh, we're I pressure. survived. Yeah, so so I I I don't feel sorry for myself at that age. I just think it's you know it it's has had a lot of effect on who I am today, and uh, but I'm. Well, I mean, it's interesting. I was talking to somebody elderly, and they were telling me the voice inside their head is the same as when they were a kid. Right? You never really, you're always you. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think when you talk to yourself, it is different. You know, I mean, I don't know. I think there's it was always that fantasy, like, what would it be like if you could go in a time machine and uh, meet yourself? You know, I think it would be creepy. Actually, <laughs> imagine, imagine if you're nine and some like old man walks up and is like, "Hey, kid, I'm you." <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be a disturbing experience, I think. So. Um, Yes, yeah, so and now I'm going to paint this book green because I think I know what book this is. In fact, I might even give myself a second book because I had a lot of books in those days. And books, yeah, I'm going to give myself another book. Is this when you had your little personal lending library? I had my library and uh, I was in Australia. And these are, these are two of my f two favorite books from that period. So. Danny, you're using watercolors? Yeah, I'm using watercolors and a uh, fine liner. So these socks were actually kind of important because... <laughs> So the school that I went to, this grammar school, it was, first I went to a school that was just for like f kindergarten, first and second grade. But then this same organization had um, a school for third graders up to high school. And so I went to the f first one and then I graduated and went to the, for one year to the big school. And the big school was, was, um, it was much more serious, and and it was much more like uh, almost like an English public school would be. So they had the very they had all these rules, and one of the rules was you you know you had to have your uniform in good shape, and it had to you know you had to have the right all the right stuff. Um, and there was one rule which was you had to have your socks pulled up. You couldn't have them like slouched down. And if you did, if a, a master, as they called them, they didn't call them teachers, they were called masters, which is, should tell you something. Um, if a master saw you with your, <laughs> with your socks, you know, uh, half mast, you had to, you would get punished, and the punishment would be you'd have to pick up 
50 papers, as they call them. So 50 like bits of scraps of garbage and trash around the school. You'd have to pick them up and uh, put them in the, and, and show the master and count them out that you had gotten 50 of them. And it happened to me once. Now, the thing is, the school was really clean. It was a well-maintained school. <laughs> and, you know, anytime a kid had socks down, he would have to go and pick up 50 papers. So it was really kind of a... You could just throw your own papers down and pick them up? Or, or you could, like, take a piece of paper and rip it into pieces. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I don't... I, I remember that there were all these myths in the school. Like, one of the myths was um, that different teachers had different ways of, it, of uh, providing corporal punishment. So like the gym teacher would hit you with a plimsoll. But then there was a math teacher who would hit you with a ruler or a slide ruler. But did anyone actually get it? Oh, yes. It? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I did once get corporal punishment, which was, and I think that it, the, uh, it was a co-ed school, was it? Maybe it wasn't. It was, I know that the lower school was co-ed, and they had a thing where girls would get hit on the butt and boys would, no, girls would get hit on the hand boys would get hit on the butt. I was going to say, that sounds, yeah. I think that's what it was. So, yeah. But your but memories I, are all a bit flaky from this time of your life. Is well, that fair to say? Yeah, but I think just thinking about it and doing this, like I hadn't really thought about that thing about the socks and the papers. But, um, yeah, so so now what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight some of these things. So I'm going to talk about. People want to know about the books. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. So right now I'm going to talk about um, pull-up socks. 50 papers. And then the school tie. Which you still have. School tie, which I still have. I'm going to write that down. I mean, considering how many times you've moved, I know it is. I think remarkable. it's the only thing that I have from that age, probably, is this is this crazy tie, um, and then, yeah, like this tuck, you know, unacceptable having having an untucked shirt would definitely not have been acceptable. Um, so these are summer shorts. And uh, my mother cut my hair, so it was always a little bit unusual. I mean, your mother was getting a PhD in psychology, right? <laughs> yeah, so she, she was she, experimenting to see like what <laughs> effect this would have on your social life, your interpersonal well, relationships. Yeah, I'd have to ask her what conclusions she came to. About yeah, that. she concluded you didn't get many <laughs> friends out of this, I'm sure. Uh-huh. I don't know. I think I think those are the days when there weren't like kids barber shops. I think it wasn't that uncommon to to have to have home haircuts. I don't know. I found a picture recently of the house that we lived in. And the house was kind of it looked like this. I mean, this is not a child's drawing of a house. This is literally what the house looked like. And then it had a bush the house it was like the most basic house it was crazy i think i went back and looked at it on, on google maps i should go and do that again street view and just see like it literally was like a child's drawing of a house <laughs> symbols of a house. i can't remember anything about the inside of it though nothing i've no i couldn't draw a map of the layout no memory i don't that's i mean that's that is strange well, as you say, you were having an unhappy time. I guess. So this book, I would say, was Wind in the Willows. Which we still read. I think I actually still have this copy. We read it probably annually. This is a good time to read it, actually, because it's about spring. And uh, we... It has great drawings. Yeah. In it. We had uh, Frog and Toad and... Uh, I guess not Turtle. Is there a Turtle in Wind in the Willows? There's the Turtle not. from last no, they're week? they're all mammals. They, um, yeah, The Wind of the Willows is, was illustrated by uh, Kenneth Graham. No, it was written by Kenneth Graham. It was written by Ernest Shepard, who also illustrated Winnie the Pooh. Great illustrator. And then this book, I would say, is probably a 
book that I can't remember the name of. Oh, James, James Harriet? No, Peter and Hans. And uh, this is a book about two boys. It's a Dutch book, I think. Dutch, maybe. We oh. have some people from the Netherlands in the chat. I think it's Peter and Hans. And it's a story of these two boys who are walking down the street one day and they see this empty shack, an abandoned shack. And they decide to take it over and to renovate it. It's like an early, early real estate flipper story. So and it's all about them like whitewashing the walls and building furniture and making little curtains and painting it. And then they would just hang out in this in this house. I was obsessed with this book. And then I lost I lost all of my kids' stuff. But then I I bought it not long ago. And I have a copy of it somewhere. One day I'll pull it out and show you. And uh, it's beautifully illustrated. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, that. And I it was quite a thing because I couldn't remember the name of it. But I managed to get Google to help me to track it down. And I got a copy of it. So um, I think around this age, I was really into the boxcar children. Yeah. Oh. Well, those were kind of novel right? Yeah. Those were, those were novel. So I think I'm going to kind of write a little headline here. color in this house a little bit too when you lived in we were born in england and then you lived in australia and you spoke english and when you moved to pakistan did you exclusively speak english um no i spoke uh urdu to some extent which is the language that they speak in pakistan and uh i would speak to you know we had we had a bunch of servants and so they all spoke english but we'd also i had I played with the servants' children, and so I would also speak Urdu to them. Uh, before I lived in Australia, I actually lived in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you certainly spoke English there. I did, for, but I was five. Did you go to, because your one of your stepdads went to Carnegie Mellon? Is that why? No, he taught there. Uh -huh. I think, yeah. I, I mean, he was, I don't know, they were probably there. They were like 25 at the time, but I think he got a teaching job there. And then you got a t teaching job in... Uh, ah, so Jay Heat says it's Hans and Peter. Hans and Peter, yeah. So he does know the book. Okay, so it's Peter and Hans or Hans and Peter. <laughs> Maybe it's been mistranslated, but yes. Yeah, what a great book. So beautiful. Somebody Googled and it's by Heidrun Petrides. I mean, I butchered that, I'm I'll sure. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even so, know why I attempted to pronounce that when I clearly have no relationship to this book or this author. So um, I would take this now, and I would write the story next to it, right here on this page. I would write the story about what was significant about my life at that point, at nine. What yeah. sketchbook are you using to have paper that accomplishes all of this stuff? This is a mixed-media sketchbook. It's kind of important, it's, right? Because you yeah, don't really Strathmore. know where this thing is going to go. Yeah, it's a Strathmore, um, and it is it is important that you know you can work on it with anything you want. You know, so I might bring in some colored pencils now um, and make it. Yeah. So I'm. If you are interested, last week I think it was I started a new set of videos called Sketchbook Toolkit. And the first one that I've put out so far is called, um, I think it's called like Art Supply Musts or something, but it's it's basically the things that I recommend that you get if you want to sort of keep a sketchbook on a regular basis. And I kind of talk about what I think, and I talk in there about what kind of sketchbook you should get. Not brands. I mean, there are certainly brands one could talk about, but I think having, a, I think mixed media... I wish that I'd known about mixed media sketchbooks earlier in my sketchbooking life because it is, you know, you can you don't have to worry. It's easy to draw on, much easier than watercolor paper, but you can also watercolor on it or you can 
put you know any kind of mixed media stuff on it without worrying that it's going to buckle the paper or bleed through or any of that kind of stuff so it is really it is really helpful um but yeah so now i have this so this what i like about this is this is like an uh it can become like a book where i can write a full story on this side of the page i could even put in a little illustration or two in there um so this is the kind of thing that we're going to be doing in this class is kind of going back and um but again some, somebody in the chat and not to look, call out anyone i won't name names said they were didn't want to relive an unhappy childhood you can do an image of yourself at any age yeah of course I'll poach her at any age yeah. pick the happiest time of your life and go back there and also i'll be on. honest with you uh i appreciate that i appreciate that you don't want to go back but i also find that this is a way of processing it you know i mean i I could certainly be in denial about a lot of things that happened to me when I was a kid. Um, and I think I have been. I think that's why there are a lot of things that I can't remember. Um, but now I feel like, you know what, I want to confront them. But I want to do it through the lens of art. I think that that will be, um, I don't know, just easier and more beautiful. In the end, I'm going to turn this these feelings into something that, you know, is beautiful to make and beautiful to, to to share so but i totally appreciate it. if you don't want to go there that's fine too of course uh hopefully there are parts of your life that you do want to commemorate you do want to celebrate and uh there, there's certainly opportunities for doing that there and lisa just said pick who you want to be in the future i mean there's a lot to be saying for said boop from uh manifestation right like yeah what pick an idealized version you know, give yourself all the things, surround yourself with the things that... I mean, I think that could be an interesting approach, could be to say, what would the childhood be like that you wish you'd had? Document that. Well, and Chris, but, but Chris mentions maybe, an, un, an unhappy childhood can have a happy moment. You know, find that... That's true. Mm -hmm. or, uh, but as I was saying, you could record your, your fantasy childhood, and then you could also write about why would... like. How would that be different? How would you be different if you experienced that? How would you, you know, would that really be a better life for you? Or are those struggles that you had the things that helped to make you who you are today? That that, that those challenges made you more resilient? Um, you know, everybody has, has had some trauma. Everybody's had, I mean, we all went through a couple years of trauma globally with the pandemic. We've all had those experiences. I think our tendency often is to push them away. But the idea behind this class is, what if we explore it? What if we try and uh, frame it perhaps differently than we have? Uh, maybe we pull it out and we say, maybe I want to make art that isn't as literal as this, but is more uh, abstract. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe I want to make colors. Maybe I want to just write letters you know there's all kinds of ways of getting into it and that's one of the things that's been particularly interesting and challenging about working on this class is i want to make something that no matter what kind of a life you've led this is a way of of capturing it you know and uh it's, you know so i don't want to be i don't want to say if you lived in the west it's you know my assumptions are certain way or if you had a happy life or if you had a stable life or if you had you know there's just so many different kinds of lives that we've had um yeah there's so, so many things popping up in the chat that I know. it's really cool because this is and I also i'll be very interested to see next week if people share their self-portraits i think that'll be really profound when we see you know all these friends that we have come from all over the world and watch the show and chat together and now you know we'll we'll understand how many commonalities we have and i you know if somebody has something really interesting that happened to them then that will be uh i mean obviously a thing to appreciate um i, I i'm really looking forward to it yeah and i would say this exercise obviously doesn't have to be about your childhood as i said at the beginning exactly you could draw yourself on your wedding day you could draw yourself you know, on a really crappy day, you know, it's just, it's just the idea is, because you could do this exercise with various points of your life. Mm -hmm. You could say, here I was at a certain point, here I was at another point, here's how things changed. That's another thing. 
Again, I think the drawing is a way of getting in touch with your emotions, right. getting in touch and, and unearthing your feelings. And yes, sometimes it can be surprising, but I think personally, I don't want to just make happy art. I want to make real art. I want to make art that has that captures emotions, that captures feelings, that is that is uh, rich and that is valuable and isn't just you know. I mean, because nice pictures, pretty pictures, that's that's a great place to be. Beauty is a great thing, um, but there are times when you know you want to have you don't want to just eat candy. So it's up to you. This is so much about your journey it's that's why it's called your illustrated life because we all have our own takes on this and that's what's going to be so interesting so if you join us early you also get to be part of these group conversations that we're going to be having in studio time and i think that that's going to be really interesting is uh to um you know to sit on zoom with some other people who are going through this process and have some conversations about it so i hope that you will be interested in doing that all right so should we wrap this up i know it's a little bit early but what do you think i mean i feel like i'm hogging the, the situation by telling my story uh, but anyway um let me just see a few other things that people have said gina says i've used art to combat the ocd that i suffer with so yeah art can be really healing uh it can be as deb says it can be very therapeutic um you know not even like art therapy, but just art making in general can be very healing. And um, so, yes, Virginia says, thank you for providing the space for us to share ourselves. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, the, it's interesting being at this point of the 10 year anniversary of Sketchbook School and however many years we've been doing Draw With Me, probably five years, is um, I'm getting back in some ways to our original intentions, you know? You know what I'm saying, JJ? It's like well, it's 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 like where where I wanted to go is I wanted to share with people how illustrated journaling and keeping a sketchbook hasn't just been a way of learning how to draw, but it's really been a way of reflecting on life, of capturing life's beauty, capturing life's challenges, getting more insights into things. And, you know, that's very different than a learning just a technical skill. But I think I mean to state it plainly that's what you have always been about. And I think at Sketchbook <clears throat> School, we have had a long history of bringing in amazing collaborators who will teach you a skill or a technique or you know, a deep dive or show you their journey. But consistently, you've always been a person who illustrates your life. You know, you've written a number of illustrated memoirs. You talk about how it got you through darkest days. You have been very you know, open and generous about telling people about this and get, making it a, you know, more popular activity. I mean, you were one of the original people that are attributed to the term illustrated journaling, and this is authentic. So, you know, some people will love it, some people won't like it, but nobody can deny that this is who you are. It's true, and I like the way you put that. I mean, I think... I think what I've been trying to do, and I think what we try to do on this channel on YouTube, what we've tried to do with Sketchbook School, is to say art is this incredible tool for doing all kinds of things. Don't prevent yourself from trying it. You know, and I think a lot of times people say, I, I can't draw, can't draw anything, have no talent, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, this is a language. This is a set of tools that's available to absolutely everybody. And you may not use them exactly the same way that other people do. You may not use them the way that you'd hoped you would. But they're still really valuable tools, and if you deny yourself them because you're, well, I'm, 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 I'm embarrassed, or oh, I'm no good, you're missing a vehicle that will take you anywhere you want to go, and, um, you know, that's that's really what I hope to do with this class. So, okay, uh, <laughs> I think it's time to wrap it up. All right, so yes, so here we are. We, um, I would love to see your portraits, self-portraits. I hope that you're willing to share them. If you are, please put them on social media, put them on Facebook, put them on Instagram, and tag them, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. SBS stands for Sketchbook School. Every week I write an essay. I'm putting one out tomorrow, which is about actually uh, about 
resilience and nature and creativity and uh, a trip that we just took to the desert. So that's going to be going on that tomorrow. If you sign up today, I'll send it to you tomorrow. Uh, just go to danesessays.com. It's free. Your illustrated life. Again, the early bird thing. I should put that, I should put that up again. The, I'm just going to put that reminder up again. School.tiny.us slash memoir. Go there and you can sign up for it. And if you get the early bird special, you get a discount on the price. And you also get to join us for the studio time. And so we can all work together on some stuff that will be cool. Um, and that's about it. Subscribe to this channel. JJ, anything else you want to you say? You know, in, in I do because I'm going to make a shameless plea for the people who made it this far. We're still trying to get to 300,000 subscribers on this channel and we're getting closer, but we're not there yet. I was hoping by April 1st. So <laughs> Yes, we just clicked over to 290. We just I know. Did. Tell yeah. your friends. I know everyone here has already subscribed, but please tell your friends. Subscribe. And if you click the bell again, we'll remind you that we are about to come together again next Thursday. Is it Thursday? I almost said Friday. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. So, all right. Uh, I'll see you again next week. And so will JJ, right? Yeah. You promise you'll be here next time? I promise. All right.